People of God, I celebrate you very seriously. In fact, you are my celebrities. I am the son of my father, the great gospel general, apostle, professor, Johnson Sulema. Call your wife, your children, sit together and have a wonderful view and be blessed. 18 to 20. And he was so attest and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given me this great deliverance. Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant. And now shall I die for test and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised? But God clave an hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again. And he revived. Wherefore he called the name thereof Enakor, which is in Lehi, unto this day. Verse 20. And he judged Israel in the days of Philistine 20 years. I cannot die like this. Tell someone, I cannot die like this. I don't know about you, but it's a prophecy for me and for everyone who is ready for it. I cannot die like this. You could, you could do that better if you could tell somebody your left and right, just two people, tell them, I cannot die like this. Now, now, one of the things, a privilege you get when you are in the church of the word is when you have a preacher who doesn't just teach you the things of the spirit but teaches you the ways of life because we are spiritual beings but we live in mortality we are spiritual beings but we live in mortality so we need to understand the ways of life what is obtainable in life or else you will only be a spiritual person and carry an afflicted body because you do not understand the workings of life. The place where we read, something got to a point where he had killed so much people, about a thousand people, one man. And after he killed them, he was thirsty. And he asked the Lord, can I die now? Can I die like this? But before we get to that spot, it's good to follow the trajectory, the story, so that we get a proper understanding of how he got to that point, and we take it again after that point. Is that okay? Is that okay? The story of Samson, we all know Samson. Samson was a prophetic child. There are three children or three kids, whatever you call them, whose birth we have predicted before they were born. Only three. The first is Isaac. Before Isaac was born, there was a prophetic word that he was going to be born. Isaac was born. Abraham was asking God concerning Eleazar, who was his servant, if he was going to become the heir. God said, no, I will give you a nation. Abraham was asking God for a child, and God was talking about a nation. The second was what we just saw, Samson. Samson was a prophetic child. And the third is John the Baptist. Jesus is the prophecy of scripture. So we cannot include him to the bed of mortality. Because he's the prophecy of scripture. John the Baptist was also prophesied before John came. When the father opened his mouth and said, it's not possible for the child to be born. So God said, this kind of mouth can give a woman miscarriage. She will shut up. So God made him dumb. Just imagine what was an affliction to a father was a miracle to a son. A son was born, a father was dumb. Amen? Sometimes the will of God can be painful. People think that the will of God means the pleasure, <laughs> means the pleasure of God. No, the will of God can be painful. When you are in the will of God, the perfect will of God, you can feel pain, you will shed tears. Yet you are in the will of God. Amen? So Samson was prophesied that Samson was going to be born. So Samson was born. And Samson was a great child, a wonderful child. But the place where we read now, we discover that Samson returned to his father-in-law's house. If you read from chapter, um, verse 1 of chapter 15, he returned to his father-in-law's house 
and brought a kid. He came to reconcile because he had a clash with the woman that he married. I'll tell you the story of the clash. He had a clash and a problem with the woman that he married. So from verse 1, he returned. And Samson was such a useless person with this intention. Samson did not return because he missed his wife. He returned because he wanted to go to her bedroom. Samson missed the wife's bedroom. And the Bible was very, very definite. Bring up verse 1. The Bible was very definite about it. But it came to pass within a while after, in the time of wheat harvest, that Samson visited his wife with a kid. A kid was a, a, a pastor for reconciliation. And he said, I will go into my wife, into the chamber. See why he came. But her father would not. Okay, bring out that translation so that you understand it better. Bring out that translation. Bring out that translation. Are you scared? Later on, it was during the wheat harvest, Samson visited his bride, bringing young goats. He said, let me see my wife. Show me her bedroom. Okay, you agree now, right? But her, <laughs> her father wouldn't let him. Or another translation. Another translation. After a while, in the time of which harvest, Samson visited his wife, went to visit his wife with a young goat as a gift. Is that what I told you? Of reconciliation. And he said, I will go into my wife in her room. But her father will not allow. Now let me tell you the story. Samson, in chapter 14, found a woman in the land of the Philistine. And said, I, will go. I like this woman. I told her parents, I like this woman. I want to marry her. And when Samson was going, he saw a lion. He killed the lion. The father was shocked. When he had killed the lion, the lion's carcass was left there. When he was coming back, he found honey. The lion's carcass had produced honey. Samson was excited. He took part of it, gave to his parents to eat. He ate part of it. And he was trying to ask them, how do you think I got this honey? Nobody could testify. Nobody could say because he was alone there. And Samson said, he put up a riddle among the Philistines, among his in-laws. He said, who can, in seven days, whoever can tell me how I got this honey, I will do this and this for them. And everyone was wondering, how did he get the honey? Samson only told one person, and that was his wife. This is how I got the honey. And the people, the wife's family, put pressure. The people of the land of Philistine put pressure on that woman and said to the woman, if you don't tell us the secret of that riddle, we will burn you and your father's house down. She was under threat. Under serious threat. If you read chapter 14, down to verse 15, they threatened to burn down her father's house and burn her and her father down. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife, Entice that the husband may declare unto us, Let we burn thee and thy father's house with fire. Have you called us so that we, us to take that which we have? Is it not so? And the woman began to cry. Emotional. She cried. She wept before him. You hate me. You don't love me. You put forth a riddle. You didn't tell me. After the pressure, Samson told her. And she told the people. When she told the people, Samson was embarrassed because they gave him the answer. So Samson was grieved. And Samson left the wife's house and went back to his father's house. I, I like those kind of marriage. It is the man that lives. It was, <laughs> it was Samson that left. Now, this is the, 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 this is the takeaway from it. Samson's wife was pressured. Call it blackmail. Her father's house was under threat. Her life was under threat. And she did what she did. Samson was angry. And he went back to his father's house. Sometimes the intensity of our anger is that we focus on people's action, not what led to their action. You are angry, you are upset, you are grieved that this person said this or did this or did that without being calm enough to find out why did they do that? Your pain and the intensity of your heart will reduce if you inquire what led to that hurt. If Samson had 
been aware that the wife was under life and death, he would not have reacted the way he reacted. Your husband said this. Your husband did this. Your wife did this. Your wife did that. You are angry. Your husband is doing this. Your wife is doing this. Your children are doing this. Have you asked them why are you doing this? So you focus on the outcome without asking them questions on the process. When you see outcome, please inquire of the process. When you understand why things are the way they are, why somebody walked away from that business, somebody dropped a resignation letter, somebody chose not to work anymore, a driver dropped the key and said, I'm no more driving you, a cook said, I'm leaving your house, a wife said, I'm done, sit down to ask what happened. I wish I'm talking to somebody here. Before you call people names, find out why they acted the way they did. When you know the reasons why some things are done, your hurt will reduce. You say, Apostle, but um, she should have told him. Is that, is that going through your mind? Is that going through your mind? Is that going through your mind? That when they put her under pressure, she should have mentioned to him that they are threatening her and her father's house. Is that going through your mind? Okay, it went through my mind too. Samson is not the kind of person to tell that. He will kill those that threaten the wife. He will complicate. You know, you say, but I've asked people why they hurt me, why they did this. You are not the kind of person they can open up to. Because if they told you, this is what, have you not seen people who are told, be careful, this person is after you. They walk, they walk to the person. You are after me. I, I wish I'm that's what I'm teaching you life now, not just spirituality. Some people cannot open up to you because the last time they opened up, what they opened up to you about became a topic on your lips. So, they don't talk. Okay. People around you are dying. And they put on. There are people with offenses carrying friendly faces. There are people with offenses carrying friendly faces because nobody to open up to. Especially the church of nowadays. The church of nowadays, all of us have become content creator. You talk to the church now, boom, what a shame. That's why if you can find a friend in church you can sit open up to, please hold that friend tight. And the Bible tells us that this woman never, so Samson took a step and left. Please, never take a permanent decision on a temporary situation. Never take a permanent decision on a temporary situation. Fix it. Is there a crisis? Fix it. There will be crisis in life. There will be disagreement in life. Fix it. Where you are going to, you are not sure of it. Only where you are now has reality. Where you are going to, where, where you are expecting can be a mirage and imagination. Where you are now is reality. Fix what you have if it gets bad. I remember growing up as a younger, as a younger child, when things are bad, I'll tell my dad, I said, my wristwatch is bad, I want another one. And he asked me a question, can they repair it? Because we have the mentality that once it's bad, discard it. If we ask all the time, my shoe is bad, he said, bring it. Can they sew it? Anything wrong, nothing is too scattered that can be gathered. Nothing is too bad that cannot be fixed. Samson left. We live in an erratic generation. A generation that believes, you know, our, our attention span is so short. And every day of our life, we are getting devices and applications that furtherly, you know, put us into that dimension of life. You got a TikTok, two minutes video. You got a, this one. Three, attention span of children. Children are no more attentive. Have you discovered the last resort on Jam? The last resort on Wayek? Academically, their mind, their mind, their natural capacity is dwindling. Today, you see children can't even answer the simplest of questions. But they know who is this? Who is that online? It's a crisis. It's a crisis. Am I communicating here? Am I communicating? It's a crisis. So, Samson, the wife kept that. So be careful how you take permanent 
decisions on temporary situations. And they threatened to burn down the father's house. And do you know if you read chapter 15, verse 6 of chapter 15, something happened and they burned down the father's house. They threatened to do it if she doesn't tell them. Something has happened in chapter 15, they actually burned, burned it. What people say in anger is what they mean. Don't let anybody tell you, I said it because I was angry. What they said, because anger and cheerfulness reveal the true state of a man. No, I only said that, that because I, I said I'm going to divorce you because I was angry. No, they were not angry. They only told you what is in their mind. Can I say this to you? Don't joke with threats. Every threat is a potential act. Anyone that threatens you actually means it. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking, you have to be careful. They threaten to burn down the house and they burn down the house. Don't joke with threats. Don't play with threats. When threats come, it's out of their border. Because out of the joke, a truth is spoken forth. Out of an emotional outburst, the reality of an identity of a person's heart is unveiled. Am I communicating here? Are you getting anything at all? They threaten to burn it down and they burn it down. Samson was angry. So I'm giving you how Samson returned back. When Samson left, the father-in-law waited for a while. Samson was not coming. So he took Samson's wife. And gave to Samson's best friend. Why is somebody clapping? Is that good? <laughs> okay, I know why you clapped. Does that teach you something? Anything you don't maintain, you lose. Life waits for nobody. Anything you don't maintain. When God gives you something. And you cannot maintain it. Can I say this to you? A good husband is given by God, but keeping him is dependent on you. A helper is given by God, but keeping a helper is dependent on you. A good job is given by God, but keeping a good job is dependent on you. When you are someone who easily walks away from people, from things, from situations, from places, you will always have repercussions. Walking out of a home, Treating a person, abandoning her, and expecting to meet her. Can I beg you? Can I beg you? Even when people leave you, don't let them meet you where they left you. Don't let them meet you where and how they left you. Somebody left you, you had an MD. And five years later, they came back. You still have an ND. Something is wrong with you. Somebody left you. You had an HND. They came back. That's something is wrong with you. Somebody left you. You had no job. They came back. Met you jobless. Please. When people walk out of your life, the time you are supposed to cry and weep, engage something new. Let something new take your time. Don't let life meet you the way life left you. When the woman, when something left, listen to me. Anointing. Grace, giftings, ability, capacity is given by God. But to maintain them is dependent on you. Samson was fully graced, super graced. But Samson ended up a rebel, a reproach. To the extent his name became a cliche. Can anything come out of Nazareth? Because he was the founder of the Naz Nazarene clan. Because of how he ended up a reproach. How he ended up a failure. God give you talent, give you gifting, give you ability. But you can die in non-entity if you do not understand the tenets on how to handle that gifting. We are in a generation where people, God can open a door for you. But by your bad character, you can close the door with your hand. Can I repeat that? God can open a door for you, but by your attitude, you can close that door with your hand. Samson, the father carried the daughter. You see, there are so many messages from this place. The father carried the daughter. Do you know the father's house being burnt with fire? The man had a hand in his crisis. When your children are married, leave them alone. You carried, the, you carried a daughter and handed over to the best friend. There are many fathers and mothers who till death want to control the marriage of their children. They want to determine what the wife of the husband, of the son does. What she wears. 
And it is bad mother, bad daughter-in-laws that become bad mother-in-laws. You that when you were married, nobody could control you. Now you want to control your daughter-in-law. Now you want to control your son. Every little thing that happens, you tell your daughter, pack home, carry your things and start coming. Your father's house is still there. Your father's house is still there. There's a crisis. You call up your son-in-law and you embarrass him as though the young boy has no parent. You touch my daughter again. You touch my... Come and carry your daughter. If you want to marry your daughter, marry your daughter. Some young men are under pressure. Before they speak, the wife has jumped on the phone. Mommy, mommy. Before they talk, I will tell my brothers. I will tell my brothers. And when you, when you are a young man, there are certain things you see, you, you should ask yourself questions. Are you following what I'm saying? You marry in a family where the young lady has so many brothers. First of all, make sure you have so many brothers too. Yeah. So where so that when is that too harsh? <laughs> okay, we see eh? Whenever I talk to you, is the wisdom of life. So that when it gets to that point, when Ukraine wants to face Russia. <laughs> sister-in-law leave your brother's home in fact if possible pack out of there pray for god to give they give they give an accommodation willingly thank god walk away how would you feel if some there's an interference in your home like that these are truths in church that we just we just throw into the trash can there are reasons today there are some women today who are uncomfortable they are dying in silence because the man has surrounded himself with all his family members your sister enters the kitchen, take what she likes. Your wife is quiet. She's dying. She's dying. Your mother comes to the house without announcement. She just came like a witch and landed at the gate. <laughs> mommy, mommy, you come. Where's my room? As if she's the landlady. Where's my room? When she entered there, she sit down like a madioha and she cross her leg like a shrine. So they are confused. She closed her leg like a shrine. The lady can anything, any jewelry that the daughter-in-law has, she has to remove it because by the time the mother sides gold, who are the one finishing my own money? Who are the one? Who are the one? Who are... So the woman is under pressure. I believe God is talking to somebody. <laughs> I have younger sisters who are married. Younger people are brothers who are married, people who are married. I don't know what happens in their home and I don't want to know. If I even get angry at times that I act so uninterested, it's deliberate. Who is controlling my own? So why will I control your own? Brother, you just act like you don't care, like you don't care. No, I don't care. I'm not interested. Make the mistake, quarter the quarter, fight the fight, make peace and be happy. No, but it's the truth. Why you look? It's the truth. Myself and Mama, we have never fought. But you think we have not had misunderstanding? We have never kept malice for one day. But misunderstanding means that you are coming with your different understanding. The other person is coming with their different understanding. When those two different understandings jam, they become misunderstanding. So there are things we don't quarrel, we don't fight. But there are things that I've, I've, she has said. I said, no, I don't agree. Are you following what I'm saying? I said, I don't agree. Even when she's right, I don't willingly say she's right. Over the week, there was something that happened and she was telling me, this is what this person said on the platform. I said, no, the person didn't say that. She cut the part and sent me the video. When I watched it, the person said so. She will catch me. But I said, well, really, this is not what the person meant. And she replied to me, he said, man, you will never agree. I said, not really. Not, not the, after a while, I said, now, nah, wow. See, as you just, you, you, became, you became FBI. 
So now, now, am I communicating here? And we, we see such things come. The ability to turn it to a joke. That's what matters. Laugh over it. That, you mean, that little thing is enough for some couples not to talk again. Very childish. I said before they give people husbands or give people wives, they should check their brain. Some grown-up guys with beers have ice cream brain. The youth, <laughs> the youth press they approached me that he wants me to give a date to the youth. So I'll give you on Saturday. I'll give the youth on Saturday, this Saturday. So we'll settle down for, by two o'clock, we'll just settle down and just talk for a while. So that we, pre we prep you for the future that awaits you. There's, no, there's nothing in the future. It's what you carry from this place. <laughs> you know, there are people that think, my future. A colorful umbra, I'm on dead, my future. I believe God for a great future, but what you are today is what you become tomorrow. A thief today becomes an arm robber tomorrow if you continue stealing. So Samson was in that crisis. Have you seen the narration? So when Samson now came back, Samson, when Samson found out that they had given his wife to his friend. Samson went and caused destruction. He scattered things. <laughs> he destroyed things. He didn't destroy his father's um, in-laws things. He found out what led to the crisis. Obviously, the wife must have opened up to him. This is what my life was under threat. That's why I did what I did. You didn't wait to ask questions. You walked away. So these people threatened you? That's what you did. Something just went, entered, the, started destroying things. And they asked a question. Who has done this? They said it was something. So they went to his father's house. Same threat. Are you following the story? Went to the wife's father's house. The same threat. And they burnt the man and the daughter inside the house and burned them down. They burnt her and her father with fire. Samson said, no problem. Samson went back again. Scatter things. When Samson was doing that, the Philistines came up and went to the men of Judah and said, well, we are going to fight you. Who has done this? The men of Judah said, what have we done? They said, Samson has destroyed things around us. Hand him over to us and we will spare you. And the men approached Samson and said to Samson, please, these people are after us. They said we should hand you over. Samson said, let's have an agreement. You will just hand me over. You will tie me and hand me over. You will not touch me. He said, yes. You will not touch me. They promised. You will not come after me. They promised. So they bounded Samson and handed him over. Before we go further, that is an explanation of the reality of life. That if your people don't give you over, outsiders can't get you. If insiders don't sell you, Outsiders can't buy you. Your attackers and haters and enemies are not as powerful as you think they are. There's only a mole. There's a mole and there's a spy. There's a hidden enemy. I make declarations in the name of Jesus. This first Sunday of the month of March, every hidden enemy, every secret enemy around your organization, your office, your job, your profession, anyone around you that is a mole, a spy, a hidden enemy that has become the backbone of your adversaries, the backbone of your attackers, the backbone of those that despitefully use you, I declare they are exposed today. They are exposed today. They are exposed today. They are exposed today. If your amen is loud, then you are the one I'm talking to. Mm. Mm -hmm. The problem is always inside. The problem in the family is inside. When there are persist persistent battles, it's inside. When there are continuous battles, it's inside. It's not external, it's inside. Are you following what I'm talking about? It's always inside. The problem of the church is the church. It's not the world. The problem of the church is the church. I was, I was um, preaching here. 
honestly, I will not respond to this if not for the sons of the prophet who are talking about it. I was preaching here and somebody else who called me. And I said something which I stand by. You see, I'm not somebody who says something and whenever you are shaking, I will not change my mouth. Because, no. In fact, whenever you are shaking, I will amplify what I said more so that everywhere can shake more. I'm not a coward. When I say something, I will, even if the heavens are falling, I will stand by what I said. If everything shakes, shake, shake, it will balance. So I'm not, I'm not. I, say, I said something on this altar. And I repeat it, I stand by it. I was talking about those who preach grace, that once you are saved, you are saved. When I said I preached all of those things before until I lost a friend. I've told you the story. I lost a friend who was also a preacher of grace. And I found out what's going on. So I went to go and pray. And the Lord told me that you are preaching Paul. You are not preaching me. That you focus on Corinthians. Who wrote the letter to Corinthians? Who wrote to Thessalonians? So, the only dispute scripture is Hebrews. Today, they don't know if it was Paul that wrote Hebrews or not. So, God told me, he said, the teachings of Paul are not from the lips of Jesus. They are from Paul's lips. They are the revelation of Christ that Paul had. But Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the gospel, we are the account of things Jesus said and did. And he said to me that my priority and focus should be on the life of Jesus. What Paul said is secondary. I can learn. Paul actually learned based on what he was told. He wasn't there. I don't know if you are following what I'm talking about. So I'm going to focus on what Jesus said more than what Paul said. If Jesus said something and I look at Paul and what Paul said is contrary to what Jesus said, I will not take Paul's own. I will take Jesus' own. And somebody says, oh, he said, Paul is not preaching Christ. If you See, I'm responsible for what I said, but I'm not responsible for how you understand it. I'm responsible for what I say, but I'm not responsible for how you understand it. Even Peter was advising us that we should be careful of the letters of Paul. Peter that knew Paul was advising you about Paul. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 16. He says, some, some learned people, they rest... They rest and they labor, which is because they are too hard. Start from verse 15, give us the message translation. I'm just digressing, I'm sorry for that. Okay? Interpret our master's special restraint for which, what it is. For what it is, salvation. Our good brother Paul, who was given so much, much wisdom in these matters, Verse 16. Refers in his letters all he has written who essentially unto you essentially the same thing. Some things Paul writes are difficult to understand. Is it, is it your Bible? Did I put it there? Some things Paul writes are difficult to understand. Irresponsible people who don't know what they are talking about twist them whichever way. They do it to the rest of the scripture, destroying themselves as they do it. Are you seeing that? Most people don't understand that Paul preached grace, that we will not preach judgment. But the same Paul said in Thessalonians 1 verse 6, it is a righteous thing for God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. It's a righteous thing. So let's stay on the scriptures and forget what I said. Let's go to scriptures. So, it is my response to that nonsense that's trending online. I said it. I stand by it. I will, I will choose what Jesus said over what Paul said any day. What Jesus said is priority. What Paul said is secondary. Paul, Paul was preaching his revelation of Jesus. It wasn't Jesus that was talking. The only three times Jesus spoke to Paul was when he appeared to him. Paul, Paul, why persecuted on me? Secondly, when he said, lest you be exalted by the abundance of revelation, he sent an, a, 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 an affliction to perfect him. And when he asked him why, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. And several times when Paul was on the journey, he was to have a shipwreck. And God told, told him, he said, you shall get to the other destination. Those were direct messages from God. But every other teaching of Paul was his revelation of Jesus. It wasn't Jesus talking. It was Paul that wrote the letters to those churches. Do you understand me? Okay, so when they bring whatever they are saying, Explain to them what I said. That's if you don't have a job. If you have, if you have. 
Amen. If a pastor has a church, has a ministry, will you sit down? Will you sit down before Facebook five hours every day? You are not a content creator. You are not in the entertainment industry. You sit down face Facebook every day. Five, yeah, you can't. Read, he's not reading Bible now. If he's reading Bible and he's having programs. He won't have time for that. Amen. What was I even saying before? <laughs> This is the part I love. As Samson was handed over to the Philistines with a new cord, the Bible says a thousand men surrounded him. Do you know what one thousand is? Sometimes when you study the Bible, do you try to make a picture in your mind of the reality of that scripture? Not 50 men, not 10, not 100. One thousand men surrounded one man to kill him. When Samson thought it was the end, write this down. Even at the end, there is a bend. Even at the end, there is a bend. When you think it's the end, God shows up. When you think everything is over, you are down and out, God shows up. And God is saying, when you are down to nothing, God is up to something. When you are down to nothing, God is up to something. The darker your night, the brighter your light. When you think everything is over, the Bible says, why Samson was still wondering what to do. He found a jawbone of an ass. That is the jaw of a donkey that was kept on the floor. That speaks of Calvary. He found the jawbone of Anas and took that jawbone. And with that jawbone, he slew 1,000 men with a jawbone. There was no sword when they gathered. There was no spear when they gathered. But ah, in the midst of that, a jawbone appeared. Sarko Parita, the enemy child of God, there is something called the supernatural. Where did the jawbone come from? We don't know. How do job on appear we don't know? You have believed so much in the natural. You are limited because you don't understand. There is something called the supernatural. Money can appear in people's accounts. You don't understand what we talk about the supernatural. Water can become the wine. You don't understand what we talk about the supernatural. Manna can fall from heaven. You don't understand. We talk about the supernatural. There was no sword. A job bone appeared. A helper can show up in your life. I'm talking about the supernatural. Supernatural. The supernatural is when the celestial swallow the terrestrial. The supernatural is when God brings his extra on your ordinary. Sir, without you knowing, you have an empty passport now. But a visa can appear in one week. And in three weeks, you can see yourself in America. It's called the supernatural. You have no car now. You don't even have money to buy a car. Somebody can buy a car and give to you. Somebody say, Lord. I receive the supernatural. Lord, 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 Lord. I receive the supernatural. Somebody shot fire, fire. Somebody shot fire, fire. Somebody shot fire, yeah, 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 yeah. Take your seat. Sir, in your journey to greatness, can I say this now? In your journey to greatness, there are crossroads where all you need is supernatural assistance. There are crossroads in your life. You need supernatural assistance because you can't figure out. See, can I say this to you, everyone? When you get to a point where you are trying to figure out a solution, Humanly speaking, it doesn't look there's any way connect to supernatural assistance. Say, Father, humanly speaking, I know nothing can happen, but I connect to supernatural assistance. I receive supernatural supply. I receive supernatural assistance. Hear me, child of God, there is a world called the supernatural world. That is the ministry of the angel. They have, the angels are the facilitators of the supernatural. They facilitate manifestation. There are many of us who have come to a point and a junction in our lives. Humanly speaking, you don't know how you can figure out a solution to that problem. You don't know how to figure out a way out of that battle. At that point, something imagine surrounded with 1,000 men in the midst of a look at your mind's eye and imagine it in your mind's eye, and you're just imagine 1,000 men. Something thought that was his end. 
a jawbone appear. I believe in the supernatural. When it appears, everything is over. I don't even know how my life is going to turn out, but I connect. I connect the supernatural workings of God, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. Say it the Lord, we don't serve a dead God. You serve a mighty God. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. When God says yes, no man can say no. When God lifts you up, no man can bring you down. God is on your side. Power is on your side. Glory is on your side. Somebody shall supernatural assistance. Take your seat. Hear this. Let me explain this. Miracle money is one of the debates today that people are debating. And I don't bother to debate. I don't debate what is real. I debate what has not happened, but I believe it can happen. But once it has happened, and I know it has happened, I don't debate it. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Something I've not experienced, but I know it's possible. I can debate it. But something I know is a reality, I don't even debate it. Because a man with an evidence is not at the, at the mercy of a man with an argument. A man with an evidence is not at the mercy of a man with an argument. I was one of those, you see, what you do not understand, don't criticize, because you can become a practitioner of it tomorrow and you'll be called a hypocrite. I didn't, I didn't understand miracle money. I didn't even like it because it sounded weird until it happened. I pray somebody says somebody's account. I say maybe somebody paid it. And I, I saw it happen once, twice, twice. So this is real. But miracle money, people don't know, miracle money is not an economy that God expects us to live by. Miracle money is an intervention. God does not expect you to sit in your house, cross your leg and be praying for miracle money. Go and get a job. But when you are in a situation that is there, you don't know how to come out of it, miracle money shows up. So that's the mystery of miracle money. In John chapter 4, and verse, is it 36 or 35? John chapter 4. Can you bring it up? I don't know if it's 36 or 35. Jesus was saying something. Okay. Go to verse 35. There's something I'm looking for. There's something I'm looking for. Go to 38. Go to 38. Now look at this. There are people that tell you that you cannot reap unless you... But that's not what Jesus said here. Look at it. This is the place where miracle money comes. I sent you to reap where you bestowed no labor. Other men labored. You have entered into their labors. So when somebody tells you, I believe in work. But you cannot enjoy favor when you depend on work. Because favor is beyond your work. Your work is to eat, not to live. You can't be rich by working. Bible says he that does not work should not eat. Eat. Work is for eating. It's not for riches. They are bought and that's what the Bible says. So those who say that you have to labor, how can you just get money that you didn't work for? I'm showing you what Jesus said here. Yeah. I sent you to places you never labor that you reap from there. The teachings of Jesus what I'll follow. Solomon said he that does not work should not eat. Paul said the same thing. 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 10, I think. He said the same thing. If you don't walk, don't eat. Eat, eat, eat. Not rich. Walking is for eating. Favor is for riches. You walk to eat. But for you to bless people is beyond walk. How many walk can you walk to take off a nation? You shall learn to nations and not borrow. Hey! This is why when I speak, everybody keeps quiet. Because I come from scripture. I don't want to give ar arguments in the atmosphere. It's real. This thing is real. It's real. A miracle happened. The job of an ass. 1,000 men were killed. But this is it. After the 1,000 men were killed, Samson took the bone and dropped it. As far as I'm done, I don't need it anymore. I've used it. I don't. And the Bible says... Samson who had killed 1,000 men became thirsty. 
enemies could not kill him first wanted to kill him enemies could not rest him lack of water wanted to you know there are some of you when you look at the battles you have conquered and you look at the current battles now you're asking yourself can i will i die like this god saw me through school there were stubborn lecturers i overcame them. hours stubborn project I overcame them now is it joblessness that will kill me if they could not kill me should i die will i die like this some of you are abroad you struggled you went through all the hay water to get a visa you finally got a visa now you're in a situation and you're asking god can i die like this look at something one thousand men gathered against me they couldn't kill me people conspired against me they couldn't get me now just for water just for test just for test i'm about losing my life something say god at this point i need you so that tells you that even a mighty man is a mighty god Ay, 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 ay. Even a mighty man is a mighty God. Something that we thought was so powerful. He got to a point, his strength failed him. For by strength shall no man prevail. Something, if you could kill the Philistine, why could you not manufacture water? So there are times in your life you need God. Your gift will fail. Your talent will fail. Your education will fail. Your connection will fail. Your ability will fail. But I will look up to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help come from God, who made the heavens and the earth. We will not suffer my feet to be moved. You that keep at Israel will not sleep nor slumber. My eyes are ever toward the Lord. He shall pluck my feet out of the net. Sir, there are things that money cannot buy. Expertise, beauty cannot buy. Connection and content cannot buy. The same man who killed a thousand men was dying. Ordinary taste, test, test. No water. So never get to a point in your life where you think you don't need God. This is your beauty that's making you arrogant. One accident can, can reconfigure you. One accident. Just one disaster. What is disaster? You don't even have an accident. Just one pimple position in a very strategic area. You know there's some pimples that are very dangerous. They'll come and owe you on the eyelid. That eye, you cannot cover it. They hold you on the eye. You can't wink. You can't wink because they cover the eye. From there, it escalates. Imagine a pimple holding somebody on the forehead, very pronounced. Sir, be thankful to God. This arrogance, this pride, this your arrogance. Something, a man that destroyed a thousand men. All of a sudden, he was dying of thirst. Take your seat. Let me talk to you. Dying of test. But sir, he cried to God. You know what God did? God brought water from that jawbone that he threw away. The same jawbone Samson thought he was done with is where water came from. There are some of you, the same church that brought your deliverance, you walked away from. Can I say this? The unction that brought your deliverance is the unction that will determine your preservation. You have discarded a grace that made you because you feel you don't need a job on anymore. You have discarded, discarded the house fellowship here, a prophetic word came upon you. But you think at this point you don't need God anymore. Some of you think you have conquered all your enemies so you don't need anybody to carry you. Not knowing that so long you are still in this world, it is full of battles. We are in a generation that discards so easily. We are in a generation of use and dump. A generation where people do not have memories of the past. People don't care. A generation where once people will achieve what they want, they feel they don't need it anymore. So you must keep a door open. Because when you have passed through that door out, you need to pass through it in. Don't take up the ladder that helped you. Because you may need to climb down. There are so many people today, we are in a generation where people think this generation has no memory. All they think of is today. Something, the jawbone of an axe that helped you to kill 1,000 people, sir. That's not the kind of bone to throw away. You will know there's something in that bone. That it was beyond just a bone. There was power in the bone. That's a bone you keep in. There are relationships you don't break. For life. For life. Sir, for life. There are some contacts you don't break for life. There are some people that you owe thanks for life. There are some boss in your office, even if they mess up and they get you angry, sir. Honor them for life. Because the times they came into your life was strategic. 
they gave you a platform, gave you a coloration. Am I talking to somebody right now? A generation that discards. The same man of God who dedicated your baby is the one you are fighting. The same pastor who dedicated your baby in that your church. That's your branch. That same pastor, you will sit down, you will finish the wife. Because you feel you don't need a job bone anymore. The same man that believed in you and carried you up. Is the man you have conspired with those that hate him to fight. Because you believe you are done with the job bone. You don't need it anymore. In the same place where grace came, grace kept you. Now you are blessed. You are not trying to ask us if Titan is scriptural. When you were broke, you didn't ask that question. When you were stranded, you are in a generation. There are many of you looking at me now who need to cry to God for repentance because you feel you don't need a job on anymore. Before you got married, you lay on the altar, you cried, you wept, did everything. Now you are married. The baby that God gave you is the reason you can't come to church early. The miracle God gave you is now the reason. I can't cry. You know, you know these children. You know these children. Yet people have 10, have 8, have 6, and they don't joke with service. When I travel with mom, Dr. Lizzie would go to programs. Sometimes when we go with the children then, they were just four. I would see her wake up as early as two. Bait everyone. Dress them up. We have a flight for seven or six. By five, even four, they are all ready. And I look at her. I say, when did you? He said, I woke up early. So I bait them. She will feed them. Do everything. So who lazy, lazy? A lazy woman is a lazy woman. Because of the same blessing God gave you, your car break down. That's why you came late. Park it somewhere and take a bike. Track. You have abandoned the job bone. The same job bone that helped you to kill a thousand men. You don't know there is water in the job bone. The job bone gave Samson what he wanted, but Samson never knew that he had what he needed. The job bone gave Samson what he wanted. But Samson never knew the job was he had what he needed. You walked out of a grace thinking you have arrived. Not knowing the grace he has so much to cover you. If you stayed, if you stayed under a grace for 10, if you stayed under a grace for 10 years and you think you have so much, just imagine if you're under that grace for 20 years. The job on. Same job on. I wish I'm talking, I wish I can open my heart and talk to you. One day a man of God died in this town and I was in his convoy. And I was told that there are so many people waiting for counseling. I said, we are honoring a man today. I'm not coming for counseling. And went there. Went to the graveside. Honored him, a son of the soil. My heart was bleeding. I was we just, we were about one year or two years old. That's a ministry. So when I finished, I came to the office to pick something. I saw some of his former members waiting for counseling. And I said, you didn't attend the burial? And one of them said, ah, who don't die, don't go. That's a man who she followed for 24 years. Could not even honor him to attend the burial. And I said, Madam, if I see you near this office again, who don't die, don't go. Bless you, don't die. You don't go. That's the generation we are in. A generation of, a degenerate, ungrateful generation. When some people are speaking, you'll be wondering if the people they are talking about are people who have helped them. You'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. There are people I've seen do something, sir. There are people I've seen do crime. Crime. I'm not a law court. I'm not a judge. So long as it's not a crime against society, against humanity, I'm not interested. I'm not aware. If people's, if people's good to you, people's multiple good to you, cannot swallow their tiny evil, then you have a bad heart. If people's multiple good cannot swallow their tiny wrong then you have a bad heart the good they have done should be what will fill your head not the tiny wrong you know in the generation where if you keep supporting the day you don't support you are a bad person why are you there for me why are you why are you there for me you are not done anything you are not done anything i don't see me i don't care so now you are not feeding me, I don't care. Anybody that you talk to me, any, I, I push it to you. <laughs> Am I communicating now? Don't throw away the job on. 
Because you may need water tomorrow. I know your pastor has hurt you. Your pastor's wife has hurt you. Many that have hurt you. No, there's almost everybody has hurt you, including me. Even as I'm talking now, he's hurting you. Because you are an egg that must be pampered. Am I talking to somebody here? You are an egg. That must is bliss song. They sang it for you. Daddy, where they pamper. Now you, that song is your own. You must be pampered. You, you must not be off. Everybody has offended you. Even the general overseer that you have not met has offended you. You are in a branch, oh, yet yeah, from headquarters here, yeah, I've offended you. Everybody, everybody's wrong. No problem. No problem. But I'm trying to let you know that is not enough to discard what you will need tomorrow. I'm telling you the truth. Life is full of twists and turns. What you walk away from today, a man had a wife, first child, a girl, second child, a girl, third child, a girl, fourth child, a girl, seven. Fifth child, a girl. Sixth child, a girl. Seventh child, a girl. Eighth child, a girl. The man told the woman, he said, no. He went somewhere and had a boy. He had a son. Drove that woman and eight children. I'm, I don't mean to discard men. I must say the truth. I'm a father. I have both genders. I have plenty children. Plenty. I have biological. I have adopted. I have spiritual. Are you what I'm talking about? I can tell you, if you're a man that God gave daughters, eh, thank God. You see these sons? They don't care. Oh. I would message my son. He would reply me three days' time. I said, why did you reply me? That is school, school, school. Talk to you later. It is gone. But your daughter will ask you, sorry, I didn't reply. Are you angry? Are you offended? I say, hey, why are they saying it is sons that are better? They care about your feeling. They want to know if you are okay. Sons, as far as they are concerned, we are guys. <laughs> we are colleagues. <laughs> Eight girls! He drove them away. Send them! Many years later, his son went to get a visa. Why the son was there, the person inside who was checking out the documents and everything, the person saw a paper, was facing the document before they take it to the United Embassy. He saw a middle name and a last name. That was her middle name and her last name. She called the young man. He said, where are you from? The young man mentioned it. That was where she come from. Who is your father? The young man mentioned it. What does he do? The young man described him. She brought her phone and saw the father's picture. The girl smiled. She threw a document. Say, go and bring your father. Yeah, go and bring your father. Then come back to submit. He, Please help me now. He said, you will submit today. He called his father. Bro, they bundled the man. The man came old. That's one thing about this old man. All the evil they did when they were young is when they are old that... I'm sorry. If it, anything I say that you don't like, just delete it. Delete it. Delete it from your memory. Okay, this is me. This is how I talk. And they met the man. He says, that's your father. He says, yes. he says come close. Hey, man, please oh, help, help my Pekino. Oh, help my son. Oh. He said, daddy, do you, do, you, do you really want to tell me that this is your son? Yes, oh, it's my son. Help, oh, help, oh, help, oh, help, oh, help. Oh. He said, mommy, is this, daddy, is this the little child you had? He said, no. I have some other children. Do you know one woman that calls so and so? Yes, oh, Vero, 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 Vero. So now, get, 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 now, yeah, yeah, drive him. He said, Daddy, I'm Vero's third daughter. I'm the third child of Vero. So long I am here, your child cannot submit. For what you did to us. Eh, eh, my picky, eh, who be your picky? Don't throw away the job on. Don't throw away the job on. Because that you discard today can become your source of lifting tomorrow. Don't throw away your job on. Don't throw away your job on. Be careful. There's a man that ran for office in this country. He was number two to a man who was number one. Till date, he has contested for presidency several times. Till date, what they hold against him is what that number one wrote in his book about him. 
Till day, that's what they hold against him. And they ask him a question. Sir, if somebody is working with you and you tell the person to go to his previous place of employment to bring a letter, and they bring a letter discrediting him, will you employ him? Mind the way you treat people. Even your landlord. Mind the things you say. Because that landlord may be the one to stand shorty for you tomorrow in the police station. I will not die like this. Somebody say, I will not die like this. Say, I will not die like this. I can't say, I will not die like this. Sir, what has helped you should be kept. What has helped you should not be discarded. A job bond that has helped you, keep it. If you want God's support from people, you no more get from them. Keep them. Don't stop relating with people because you feel you don't more need them. Keep them. Even when they are no more helping you, keep appreciating them for what they have done before. Whatever has helped you to obtain and attain should be maintained. Whatever has helped you to obtain and attain should be maintained. Whatever has helped you to obtain and attain should be maintained. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. A young boy was in the choir. He was the vice president at one time. When we are think we are the bachelor. As soon as their tenure expired, they put somebody else. He left church. Because once a boss, always a boss. He couldn't himself take directions from other people. He left. One time he was arrested at Sabo. And he said, they said, who can stop? He said, Apostle, Apostle. He called. And the officer called me. I said, who is he? When they brought him with handcuffs, I said, I used to know him. But he left about a year ago. What, what is that? I should lie? I used to know him. I said, but he left about a year ago. Because he, he said to people, how can he now be taking instruction from people that were under him? Presidents of this country, when they become ex-presidents, they remain in the country. But the arrogance of some Christians is terrible. The job on. You drop someone from head of department, from being head of department. So you want to now scatter the department. The same department that made you, that made them know your face. You are no more the leader. They remove you from being women leader. So you must scatter the women in the church. They put you from being HOD choir. So you must cause crisis. If I'm not a leader, we will not agree. They stop from being head of the ushering department. Now there's crisis. You now have a camp. You have div as you are dividing that camp, that's how God is dividing your life. As you are splitting that department, crisis will come. Because you cannot be a, 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 an offense in the house of God. Don't let a man of God carry you to God in prayer. Study your Bible very well. Hebrews 13, 17. The Bible says it's not good for you. It's not good for you. It's not good for you. Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves unto them that watch over your soul as they must give account that they may do it with joy, not with grief, for it is unprofitable for you. A man of God goes and says, Father, thank you for the work you have given to me. Thank you for this church. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for your grace and the testimony we are seeing. Thank you for Mrs. So-and-so who has been a blessing. Thank you for Mr. So-and-so who has helped me. Thank you for those who have made the body in light. But Father, you see Mr. Tobeto. You see Mr. Okorocha. You see Brother Lagbaja, Father, anything you would do to anybody that caused pain for your work. Do. He say it's not grief. You see Sister Paulina, Father, answer her. It's not good for your soul. When people carry you to God in prayers, you, you see, you think these things, eh, it's just there, it's not, I beg you, nothing, nothing, nothing will happen. Time will tell you. When people are living a life that has caused an anointed man who has invested on them pain. Am I communicating here? Job on! Of an ass. If somebody left the house of God because of you, because of you, somebody stopped believing in Christ. Because of you, somebody left the church. Because of you, a giver stopped giving. I cannot die like this. Are you responding? I cannot die like this. What happened? Number one, if you must enjoy preservation, the Bible says, Samson said, 
You have given me deliverance from these Philistines. You must consider what God has done in the past. You cannot have a projection. One of the easiest ways to enjoy grace is to consider what God has done in the past. Sir, what God did. That's why you must take your Bible and study to tell us the things God has done. Revelation 19 verse 10. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You must get to that point. You understand in 1 Samuel 17, I think from verse 34, when David said that God delivered me from the lion and the bear. He would deliver me from this great Goliath. The God said there came a bear and a lion when I kept my father's flocks. And I tore that bear and lion with my hand. He said that same God will deliver me from this Goliath. When you consider what God has done before, when the doctor gives you a report that you can never have a child, you remember there was a woman called Hannah. God gave her a baby. There was a lady called Rachel. God gave her a baby. Baby. There was a virgin called Mary. She conceived of the Holy Ghost. There was a woman called Elizabeth. God gave her a son. The same God that did it before, he can do it again. What he did for one, he can do for another. We serve a God who has done great things in the past. He has fed 5,000 men with five loaves of bread and two fishes. Do you know the meaning of embarrassment and disgrace? That was what happened in John chapter 2 when they suddenly had no wine. But this same God turned water water into wine hear me and hear me well this God can do wonders this God can do miracles if he did it before he can do it again what he did in the past he can do it now I cannot die like this because God has preserved people in the time of old I cannot die like this because God has kept the patriarch in the faith I cannot die like this God has preserved me before he will preserve me again there was a time I slept and the enemy if you back me for my life, they say he must not wake up. He must not wake up. She should not stand up. That was why you were having a nightmare because there was an attack for your existence, there was an attack for your rising. But God woke me up, and that was why when I woke up, I stood up and said, This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. I cannot die like this. What God has done before, He will do it again. If He kept me before, He will keep me again. If He saved me before, He will save me again. I cannot die like this. This is not my end. God is alive and is able to keep to the uttermost. I cannot die like this. Let me tell somebody. He has done it before. He will do it again. Ah. Eee. That's how Testimonies are the seals of God's cap capacity. Act reveals ways. If you can celebrate the act of God, you will see his ways continually. If you can celebrate the acts of God, you will enjoy his ways continually. When you begin to say, that's why some of you are looking at this church, at me now in this church, you have never given testimony in your life. Never. No matter, you have, you have, you have changed several cars, oh, but you cannot, you. go start. Pavrot, Pavrot, Pavrot. Pavrot, Pavrot of George. Come here, I'll call them. <laughs> if you are... You have never testified. It's like an entitlement. It's like God owes you. Yeah, sister. Ah, God has given you a miracle check. If I uncle. All the church and service where they go, Papa, they pray, so I don't get picky. Ow. Come and testify. Ah, better, better. God has done it. So you, you, are, you feel entitled, 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 entitled. You feel it's something that you deserve. When you celebrate the act of God, you enjoy his ways. You must celebrate what he has done before so you can enjoy what he's about to do. Don't be discouraged. Anytime you're in a crisis, look for where God has done something like that before. Let that become your fortitude, your bedrock. You can't die like this. Because somebody has been in this kind of situation before God brought them out. This affliction that you have been afflicted with in your body. Somebody has had this kind of sickness and God brought them out. This crisis, somebody has had it and God brought them out. You cannot die like this. 
Number two. And I'm going to pray. Are you blessed at all? I can't die like this because I have a future. In verse 20. <laughs> in verse 20, the Bible says, After that, he judged them in the land of Philistine 20 years. This is somebody who was about to die of test. There was still 20 years ahead of him. Somebody that the enemy was about to extinct. You have a future. You can't die like this. There's an assignment on your life. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Ah, Psalm 139, verse 17. It says, how precious are thy thoughts towards me, O God. Great is the sum of them. Isaiah 55, verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither my ways, your ways, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts and your thoughts and my ways than your ways. Hear me, child of God, that you have a future. Don't look at the present. Look at where you are going. There are nations. Do you know your current warfare is because of the welfare of certain destinies? Your current welfare is because of your current warfare is because of people's welfare. Your current battle is because of several mantles you carry. If you don't have a future, Satan will not bother you. The devil is a businessman. He does not invest where there's no profit. If there's nothing about you, Satan will not bother you. He's too smart. Bible says, go it about. What's he looking? Looking for the one that is a good investment. So the reason you are seeing battles around you is because there's a future. There's a future. There's a future. Sir, even if you don't feel there's a future, initiate what has a future. Even if you don't feel there's a future, initiate what has a future. Somebody can open his mind and say, as I'm coming to this church, whatever branch you're in, this also so amount is my contribution to the diesel of the service. I must walk to the pastor at the end of the service and say, sir, this is 2,000, this is 5,000, this is 1,000. I do that every Sunday for the rest of my life. God, we have a, enough reason to keep you alive. Every month, I will contribute to the feeding. Every, initiate a lifetime project. A lifetime Initiate longevity. There is something you initiate. So long God keeps me alive. Every week, every month. This is what I'm going to be doing for God. And God said, because of this you have said. Because of your relevant. You have secured longevity for yourself. You have secured long life for yourself. There are people that the angel of death cannot terminate. Because they have a, I have a long life project. For myself. For my children. I have a long a longevity project. The Lord, so long I live. Let everything be hard. Let a bag of rice be, be 200,000. We will still feed people. Am I talking to somebody here? Because it is a covenant. It's a covenant with God. We will still give them meal. They will still come. So when God sees that, God says, no, there are thousands of people that look forward to Saturday to come and eat. If anything happens to this person now, those people will cry and say, God, Why? Initiate a long life project. A project that determines longevity. Pastor, leave this for me. Every battery on the microphone, I will be buying it. Where is the technica? Don't disturb pastor. Anything concerning diesel, my family will take care of it. For, there is there that, sir, it, listen to me. I know you say, oh, Papa, is it all about money? Not just money. It can be cleaning the chairs. It can be every Saturday. So long I have chance, I will join the altar decorators. I will join sanctuary cleaners. There's, there is, must be a long life project that heaven will look down and say you have a long list of reasons to be preserved. I cannot die like this. There's a future. I'm going somewhere. Like I said, even if there is no future, initiate a long life project. Initiate a project that when heaven looks at. So in other words, even if you don't feel you have a future, deliberately create a future. I cannot die like this. Be upstanding. My time is up.